Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with my colleague, Alex Conrad, who has an exclusive out on a secretive new investment firm that's being bankrolled by WhatsApp billionaire Jan Koum. Alex, good to see you. Tell us more about this firm. Yeah, it was a fun scoop. Uh, we, we found a filing, Diane, that basically showed that this firm called Newlands, which is a complete ghost on the internet, no nothing on their website, even the investors' uh, LinkedIn profiles don't have photos attached, really low profile. It had almost $10 billion in public tech stocks, uh, which they have to disclose to the SEC. And so we were like, what is this firm? And then we, we dug around and we discovered that it is at least the vast majority of it is the money of this billionaire, Jan Kuhn, who Forbes values at $15 billion after he sold WhatsApp to Facebook almost 10 years ago. You know what's unusual in reading your stories? First of all, I can't decide, is it a family office or is it a classic investment firm? It doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to really meet the criteria for either. How would you describe it? That was one of the things that I thought was fun about this story. Uh, frankly, I felt like it was a little bit of a mystery because venture capitalists, including some who used to work with the guy who was managing this fund, a guy named Michael Abramson, who used to work at Sequoia, arguably the most famous VC firm in the world, they mm -hmm. called it, oh, Jan's family office. And, and so the venture industry, they were talking about it like it was a family office. Then I spoke to family office experts and they were like, this doesn't look like a family office at all. It looks like a sophisticated hedge fund. So trying to understand what it was, was part of what we found so interesting. I think that what it really is, is kind of a investment vehicle that Coom is bankrolling, but could aspire to be a lot more than a traditional family office, which might be doing everything like uh, buying your car or hiring your nanny or sort of managing your financial life. What's what's interesting, a lot of family offices have been investing in private equity, even the fact that it's investing in these public big name stocks. I mean, Meta, Tesla, Alphabet, DoorDash. I mean, that that in itself is unusual. And I'm wondering if it's I was going to say canary in the coal mine. I guess I should say oil well. Right. It's based in Dallas. But is is that, first of all, emblematic to you of anything about the state of these particular stocks? Because they haven't exactly had a roaring year. It's a great point. Um, but I would say that if you look at their equity holdings over the past year, and we do get to see a few quarters of filings now, they've they've really invested a lot of money going from, you know, three billion and change to almost nine billion. Um, and part of that is because they keep pouring more money into these stocks, but also the stocks have appreciated somewhat over the course mm. of the year, you know, they were hammered so bad last year that, you know, some of these stocks like Meta have actually done pretty well this year. And everything we heard from sources was that this guy Abramson, who is friends with Coombe from, from when Sequoia backed WhatsApp a decade ago, that he is all about the risk reward profile. And so for now, he has seen these public tech stocks as undervalued this year. And that's why they were putting so much money in. But we do believe that they're going to be investing a lot more in startups. And that was one thing that we also found interesting here was that we're starting to hear their name in the startup community, but we don't think that they want startup founders to be admitting that they're taking their money. Uh, so the startups, uh, you mentioned CloudFuse, LightUp and FTX. Can I start at the third <laughs> FTX um, bankrupt? Yeah. What do you make of that? Yeah, it could be uh, on the filing, it should be WTF, not FTX. But um, <laughs> basically, Michael, you know, and the Sequoia folks still know each other. And it's my understanding from sources that F FTX was, you know, a big Sequoia investment. And then also, as Newlands was formed in 2021, they also invested, they were listed in an FTX filing as one of the firms that would be approached for an emergency fundraise that obviously never happened. So yes, there are only a couple traces of Newland startup investments, and this is one that they would probably not want out there. So is this almost like stealth mode? I mean, it's hard to say because they didn't respond, you know, directly to your queries, but I'm curious about but the fact that they're stealth, so private. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. But. But it, it's not unusual for family offices to stay pretty quiet because it's almost like none of your business. Investment firms, the opposite. Certainly when you're investing in startups, part of you want to promote those startups and part of it's having high name, you know, big name investors like these. What do you make of this 
sort of obsessive privacy, do you think it's temporary? You know, it's fun. Fun. I got to go back to a cover story that Forbes did in 2014 about Jan Kuhn around the time he sold the company to Facebook, now Meta, mm -hmm. by a former colleague of ours named Parmi Olson. Mm -hmm. And in it, he uh, he talked about how when WhatsApp first made the top 20 of the App Store, all the employees celebrated and Jan did not because he said that marketing and press kick up dust and basically create noise, you know, that, that you should not seek out attention. And I think that really speaks to what he and this guy Abramson have been going for with Newlands. They, they just want to invest with no profile, no publicity. I think they wish they had even less of a public profile than they do because they had enough breadcrumbs for us at Forbes to sniff it out. And I had help from a number of our colleagues in doing that. But, but you know, I think that this is just their preference, that they, they want the money to just be deployed, let the founders speak for themselves, and, and they'd prefer to keep their names out of it. Well, I suppose in one respect, good for them. Um, can I step back just to the 30,000 foot look for a second? Uh, because, you know, a lot of wealthy, you know, billionaires who've made it, they can become angel investors, they go into private their equity, they have family offices. Give me some sense of, of how, you know, how does some context around, you know, how he invests relative to some of his peers? Absolutely. So I think uh, this represents what experts told us was maybe like a new generation of wealth management where you do see some family offices and high net worth individuals being a little more sophisticated or braver in backing a bunch of public tech stocks, investing in other funds, investing in startups. And that degree of sophistication, according to the people I spoke to, often would, would come for a family office maybe in its second generation, or maybe after it had been around for a long time. It wouldn't be a shock if a tech billionaire tried to speed run that and basically get really sophisticated right off the bat. But we've also seen some influential hedge funds start with you know one billionaire kind of seeding them and getting them off the ground. Um, several of the employees at Newlands per LinkedIn worked at Maverick Capital, which mm -hmm. is a firm also in Texas that was founded um, by a tiger cub coming out of Julian Robertson's, uh, you know, network of individuals, mm -hmm. Tiger Global being probably the most famous tiger cub. Um, and that was also bankrolled by a then billionaire who later went bankrupt. So they obviously don't want that history to repeat itself. But um, this, this is either a new look family office or it's this kind of sophisticated investment vehicle that one would use instead of one. Um, and I think it's really interesting to, to just see if this will be an outlier or other people will try to do the same thing. Great. Well, definitely read the story. I think it's intriguing and I'm intrigued to see what they invest in next. So thanks for joining us, Alex. Yeah, maybe next time they'll, they'll talk to us, but we'll keep reporting either way. Thanks, Diane. Excellent. Talk to you soon.